In this demo, we'll show a local test network with many Falcon nodes and a simulator issuing a number of actions randomly. To run this, we'll use GoFalcoin and a testnet simulator tool. Note, everything we are showing here is still in development and very much subject to change, especially the naming or arranging of commands. On the right, we can see the help text of the GoFalcoin program. On the left, we can see the help text of our testnet simulator. This is a program that creates a network, adds Falcon nodes with a role, minor or client, and then automatically runs through many kinds of actions, sending payments, adding market orders, storing files. We can configure the simulator to set the size of the network, block times and other durations, the actions to issue, and more. It allows other test programs to issue commands and even manual user input. It's useful for debugging, for testing, and for demoing Falcoin. Let's run it with default settings. It outputs some links, its configuration, and starts up. It is now spawning Falcon nodes according to configuration and issuing commands to run randomly chosen actions. Below, we can see the GoFalcon processes running on this computer. GoFalcon daemons are the individual nodes. The ephemeral GoFalcon processes issue commands to the nodes. The message wait command is used to wait until a particular transaction is mined into a block. The logs endpoint aggregates the event logs of all the Falcon nodes in the network. This is all the activity in the network. We can filter it with familiar tools like grep and jq. And we can use it to drive visualizations. More on that later. We can also inspect the running Falcon processes and issue commands to each of the nodes manually. Let's try one out. We can get information about the node, like the peer-to-peer -peer connections, its wallet address and bounds, the blockchain as it sees it, The order book, the message pool, and so on. We can also send transactions manually, which we'll see in other demos. Quitting the simulator will shut down all the Falcon nodes cleanly. The local repositories are left in temporary directories so that its internal data and its logs can be inspected manually. This is useful for continuous integration tests and debugging.